Hi, Hartfield Weather.com meteorologist Paul Oregon here on Tuesday morning, June the 20th. A couple of stories to talk about here. First of all, the tropics have come to life in the Atlantic Basin. We do now have a tropical storm named Brett. The front running system of two systems did in fact intensify enough yesterday to become a named tropical storm and it very likely could become a hurricane over the next 24 to 48 hours or so but as we said in yesterday's video it looks like after that time period uh, some weakening should take place and we'll talk about some of the factors involved with first a strengthening into a potential hurricane and then the likely weakening after that leak this week into the upcoming weekend another big story with the weather very wet weather pattern over the southeastern states it looks like a lot of that moisture should push northward into the mid-atlantic region probably a daily shot at showers uh, from midweek right through the upcoming weekend for places like dc philadelphia and new york city a much wetter weather pattern appears to be setting up for the mid-atlantic region certainly across the Tennessee Valley and southeastern states, a very wet weather pattern has already uh, begun and it will continue for the next several days along with the increase, increasing chance for moisture, for rain in the mid-Atlantic region. Uh, temperatures stay quite cool for this time of the year. Over the next few days, we'll have a persistent low-level easterly flow of air that will keep temperatures below normal. Places like DC, Philadelphia, New York City, uh, not only uh, today but tomorrow and especially Thursday as well with that stiff breeze from the ocean inland, a easterly, east to southeast flow of low level air over the next few days. Let's start off on the tropical scene here by looking at NOAA's National Hurricane Center positioning of the tropical storm Brett and the second system right on its heels. First of all, Brett intensified yesterday into tropical storm status. It is likely to continue to intensify over the next 24 or 48 hours or so, and probably heads to the northeastern part of the Caribbean Sea. That is not set in stone. There's still a chance that it cuts up to the North Andes, but once it reaches this part of the Atlantic Basin, the Caribbean Sea or the southwestern Atlantic, it looks like it'll encounter some vertical shear, uh, maybe some drier air with some Sahara dust getting involved in this part of the Atlantic Basin. And uh, temperatures are not quite as uh, warm relative to normal over the Eastern Caribbean Sea as it is right now over the Eastern part of the Atlantic Ocean. This system has a chance to intensify into a tropical storm and it will continue to move to the uh, west, northwest and northwest over the next few days. Well, I thought I'd show this map from the University of Wisconsin, the CIMSS Tropical uh, webpage, a very good webpage, and it has uh, uh, maps like this that show the S S Sahara dry air. This comes off the Sahara Desert over northern Africa, moves from the east to the west into the Atlantic Basin, and certainly can play a role in uh, an unfavorable role in the tropical activity over the Atlantic. First of all, here are our two systems here in terms of infrared satellite imagery. Right here is the second wave, and here is Tropical Storm Brett. A fairly organized system right now. Again, it's not a, a very powerful tropical storm, but it does have chance to intensify over the next day or two, perhaps reaching hurricane status. But notice all these oranges and reds and yellows here represent drier air associated with Sahara Desert uh, air that moved from the northern part of Africa into the Atlantic Basin. And as this system, Brett, reaches the Eastern Caribbean, or at least this part of the Atlantic Ocean, it'll encounter some dry air, again, associated with the Sahara Desert that moves with the trade winds from the east to the west. So this is strike number one against Brett that could cause weakening even after it potentially reaches hurricane status, you have some dry air. Strike number two, vertical wind shear will take place in this part of the atmosphere. We've talked in recent uh, days and weeks about the contradictory signals going on uh, in, uh, t in terms of sea surface temperatures uh, for tropical activity in the Atlantic Ocean. First of all, very favorable conditions in the Atlantic with warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. However, unfavorable 
El Nino is intensifying in the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean. And really, both of these factors are playing a role. Right now, intensification is taking place over those very warm uh, waters of the eastern Atlantic. But once Brett reaches into the southwestern Atlantic, into the northeastern Caribbean, it'll actually encounter some vertical shear, partly as a result of that El Nino that is setting up over the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean. So a complicated picture, but again, it looks like in the near term, the next 24, 48 hours or so, Tropical Storm Brett can perhaps reach hurricane status. But then after that, late this week into the weekend, when it reaches this part of the Atlantic Basin, it is likely to undergo some weakening. Well, I mentioned up front, really, two big weather stories going on. First of all, you have the tropical activity, and second of all, you have a very moist weather pattern now over the Tennessee Valley, the southeastern states, that will bring an increasingly wet weather pattern to the Mid-Atlantic region, where, of course, it's been rather dry over the past several weeks. We start off the day here with a pretty impressive trough for this time of the year, centered over the Tennessee Valley. Notice ridging over the Hudson Bay region of Canada. I always like to look at the southeastern part of Canada for ridging during tropical season. The stronger the ridging up in this part of North America, southeastern Canada and northeastern part of the U.S., the better the chance of a tropical system cutting from the east to the west right into the southeastern U.S. or perhaps farther south into the Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico. There is indeed strong upper level ridging right now over the Hudson Bay, but we'll see going forward as we get into the weekend, this weekend's, and that is another unfavorable factor for uh, intensification of Brett. So this is another factor here, the weakening upper level ridge uh, that should cause weakening in uh, Brett late this week into the upcoming weekend. Let's in fact move forward here. You see that trough, first of all, kind of sitting and spinning. This is a Wednesday afternoon forecast map. And again, at times it'll send moisture all the way up into the mid-Atlantic region, especially uh, by the time we get to Thursday and Friday and cooler than normal conditions. Really, we have a high pressure, uh, and we'll see that in a moment on the surface weather maps, high pressure to the north of the mid-Atlantic, low pressure to the south, a combination of the two bring in cooler than normal, easterly flow right into the mid-Atlantic region from the ocean. Here we go now into the uh, Friday time frame, and notice this ridging here starts to weaken, and that is uh, really a kind of unfavorable for the long, longer-term prospects of Brett, uh, uh, which could, in fact, reach hurricane status over the next couple of days, but then weaken after that. Here's that trough sitting over the uh, Ohio Valley Mid-Atlantic region by the time we get to the upcoming week. And so again, this is one big change to the overall weather pattern in the Mid-Atlantic region. Specifically, it becomes uh, more humid, it becomes uh, uh, a wetter with an increasing chance of showers, especially for midweek, right through the upcoming week. And we'll go out a little bit farther in time. And here we go all the way out to Sunday morning, relatively weak ridging here over the northwestern part of the Atlantic Ocean, still an upper level trough sitting over the uh, mid-Atlantic region come the second half of the upcoming weekend. Well, let's wrap up by looking at the surface forecast maps from the Zero Z run of the GFS. Again, a lot of moisture here sitting over the Tennessee Valley up into the southern part of the mid-Atlantic region. Again, high pressure to the north and the combination of that high pressure to the north and low pressure to the south is really uh, producing a, a easterly flow of air right into the middle Atlantic region. Again, it place a low pressure down in this region. Winds, of course, flow clockwise around highs, counterclockwise around lows, and there will be a persistent east to southeast flow of air. Places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, Delmarva Peninsula, New Jersey, and that will produce cooler than normal conditions over the next few days. Now, let's move forward here with the surface forecast maps. And here we go. There's the high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south of the mid-Atlantic region. Now a lot of moisture down here. Now let's continue to move forward here. And we'll see it in a moment, the uh, uh, reflection of Brett here. Relatively weak system by the time it gets close to the islands here later this week. This is the Friday morning forecast map. Again, uh, certainly nothing to write home about here. A 10.07 millibar tropical wave at this time. So again, it could 
reach hurricane status in the next one to two days or so, but weakening is likely after that, late this week, going into the upcoming weekend. Combination of factors, first of all, dry air over the Eastern Caribbean, the Southwestern Atlantic associated with the Sahara Desert air mass that has pushed westward in the trade winds uh, into the Atlantic Basin. Number two, vertical wind shear associated partly as a result of the El Nino forming to the south and west in the uh, eastern part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. And finally, three, the upper level height pattern, not too favorable, not a real strong upper level ridge over southeastern Canada. Notice at this time by the Friday, the moisture showing up here on this particular map in green with shower activity all the way up into the northeastern part of the nation and again it's kind of evolves into a wetter weather pattern here's a saturday forecast map and finally we go all the way into sunday we have a daily threat of showers all the way up into the middle atlantic region uh, it really gets underway tomorrow and continues right through the upcoming weekend. So again, two big weather stories, the tropical scene and the wet weather pattern setting up for much of the eastern U.S. That's it for now for arcfieldweather.com. This has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.